Fantasy TV. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, in my country, in the United States, and around the world, this is Martin Zender addressing the body of Christ, mainly the body of Christ, and telling you that we shall not all die. Along this line, someone made a comment on my video yesterday. I don't know if you knew this, but there's a theory out there which says that um, there will be a pre-kingdom kingdom, that Israel will enjoy a three or 400 year resurgence and it will be called a kingdom. But of course the kingdom comes after that. It's convoluted, it's crazy. It's invented by a guy named Otis Sellers. I don't know if you've heard it. Someday I may deconstruct it, but so few people believe it that it's almost not worth it. I mean, no, it is not worth it. Anyone who strains to put off the coming of the Lord. Now, you may say, well, Martin, your position that this thing is around the corner, you have no solid evidence. Okay, let's assume that. The, the people who say that it's 500 years away or it's not close, what solid evidence do you have for that? I'm saying it's close. You're saying it's not close. Neither one of us has a scripture that says specifically a day or an hour. So, assuming that I'm simply supposing this, you are too. But I find it interesting that some people will tend to, by default, believe the far away, the far away theory. Why? It's just like when people are confronted with verses that appear at first glance to teach eternal torment, and they're confronted with verses that clearly teach the salvation of all, they will gravitate toward the eternal torment verses. They, they, they don't want to see the God is the savior of all humanity versus why why because they want eternal torment to be true they like it they like eternal torment and so if in their mind it's a toss-up if in their mind well there's really not much evidence for the salvation of all but I, I admit there's really not much solid evidence for eternal torment but I lean toward eternal torment why because you like it so why do some people take a hazy, fuzzy, really unscriptural invention by Otis Sellers that there's a pre-kingdom kingdom and that, oh, the, the snatching away the body of Christ hundreds of years away, hundreds of years away. It's, and it's also interesting that the people who say, you can't set a time, you can't say that it's going to be in 15 months because it's going to be in 500 years. You're setting a time too, numb nuts. You're also setting it time. It's because I have a theory that people who put like to put it off, who will gravitate toward far, far away, they love the current eon. They love the current eon. They don't want things to change. They're happy with their families, with their jobs, their situation in life. They don't want this to end. They want it to keep going on and on and on because it's so lovely down here, isn't it now? Well, maybe for them it is, but some of us feel the pain of the world. So, what the heck? Someone said that, boy, Martin, you're going to have egg on your face when uh, what you are hoping for doesn't occur when you are hoping for it, and when you're longing for it. Obviously, Martin, you're longing for the coming of Christ to the point that you will uh, bring to us indicators that uh, the coming of Christ is near. Boy, are you going to have egg on your face? Hey, dude, I have egg on my face 576 times a day. Why? I mean, exactly 576 times a day. Because here's a revelation for you. What have I said? I said that I used to say that the snatching away of the body of Christ will be five minutes from now. Five minutes from now is what I've said. And then I read of how God cuts short the time, right? He cuts it short. Because if the time is extended, no one could be saved at all. So I decided to cut it short. So I say, the snatching away will happen in two and a half minutes. This is why there is no date and time, or day, I should say, 
day and hour set for the snatching away because it is supposed to be a constant expectation of those who love Christ's appearing. If you love Christ's appearing, then you want it to happen. And God is gracious to put this longing in our heart and to not tell us the hour or the day so that even those in Paul's day were constantly expecting it. It's a good thing. It's called loving his appearing. Those who gravitate toward far, far away, they don't love his appearing. They love the current eon. This is my theory. This is my suspicion. So I'm looking constantly for his appearing. So I get egg on my, on my face 576 times a day because every two and a half minutes that goes by and Christ hasn't come, I'm wrong. Great. I'd rather be wrong every two and a half minutes than to not love his appearing and to love the current eon. Now I have, um, I have thoughts is I don't have, again, well, I'll tell you when I don't have explicit scriptural evidence, but I'm going to tell you how I think the snatching away will go. Some of you, I think most of you will find this interesting because you know me, you know that I've been at this for a while, I've been studying scripture for a while, and that while I may proffer an opinion, it is an educated opinion. So here it is. Here it is. Well, let me start with a scriptural passage. This is an amazing thing. Paul, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, Now this I am averring, brother, that is stating forcefully, that flesh and blood is not able to enjoy an allotment in the kingdom of God, neither is corruption enjoying the allotment of incorruption. And now this, and now this. Verse 51 of 1 Corinthians 15, Lo, a secret. To you am I telling, we all indeed shall not be put to repose, yet we all shall be changed in an instant. We all shall not be put to repose. I think the King James says, we shall not all die. There is a generation that shall be changed while they're alive. While they're alive, they will not taste death. Paul goes on to describe how the trumpet of God will sound and the dead will be changed, then the living will be changed because if this thing happens in an instant, there will be people alive on the earth when it happens. And I believe through several indicators that it will happen soon. This is real. Now I'm going to tell you how real I take this. I know it sounds like fantasy. I've said that many times. I could go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, but you know that drill. The Lord will descend from heaven with a shout of command, the voice of the chief messenger, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Thereupon we, the living, who survived to the coming of the Lord. That will be changed together with the dead. This is a parallel passage, as you know, to 1 Corinthians 15. But the shock of this is to say, we shall not all die. Get it? We shall not all die. So this event that we are looking forward to is real and it is going to happen. Here's how I think it is going to happen. First, let me tell you how I thought, I used to think it was going to happen. I believe that there are very, very few people in the body of Christ. The, the, the world is saturated with worldly unbelievers and even more saturated with religious unbelievers. They do not believe one iota of Paul's teaching. That is on the death of Christ, because people believe, and the majority of people that are religious believe in the Trinity, which denies the death of Christ, and that Christ died for our sins. The majority of religious people, I'll say all of them, I will say all of them believe that your sins are taken away when you believe in Jesus Christ. That takes away the truth that Christ took away your sins. Anyway, so that is, they don't believe one thing in Paul. And I'm sorry, but um, somebody with a, a fish applique on the back of their car does not a believer make. A fish applique on your car does not a believer make. Cute little Christian sayings on your refrigerator does not, do not a believer make. Church attendance doesn't mean you're a believer at all, does it? Of course not. It's believing Paul's evangel and it is rare as a lightning strike, even rarer than that. So there are not many members of the body of Christ. I would be shocked if, if there were 5,000 members of the body of Christ alive today. 
I actually think the number is closer to 500, and I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. This is me. I don't have any proof for it, but I'm going by scriptural precedent. We're dealing with a God who saved eight people from the flood. We're dealing with a God who chose 12 disciples, who brought two into the promised land from an entire generation of Israelites who traversed the deserts after having come out of Egypt. That's, the, that's what we're dealing with here. So there are very few in the body of Christ. Therefore, the snatching away, contrary to the Christian ideas, the Christian theories, where at the snatching away, planes will crash because all the pilots are believers, of course. Buses will crash. We all know all bus drivers are, are believers because they go to church. Some of them go to church twice a week. Ooh, they must be believers then. There will be multiple chaotic events happening in the world. Because when snatching away happens, of course, the world's every member of the world's most populous religion, of course, they're all believers in Paul's gospel. So we're talking millions and millions of people being snatched away. No, we're talking hundreds, not millions. Paul's gospel, he, when Paul revealed it, he called it a secret. He called it a secret. In many ways, it's still a secret. Because so many people, isn't it odd? Before Paul's letters were written, this was a secret. Now that Paul's letters have been written for 2,000 years, it's still a secret. You would think that putting it in print would cause many more believers, but it doesn't because the God of this eon blinds the apprehensions of the unbeliever so that the illumination of the glory of God and Christ does not irradiate them. I'll give you more details on that soon. So this event, the snatching away, which is real and is coming, is so practical. I'm going to first tell you how I used to think of it. And I'm looking at my clock. I'm sorry for this. I apologize, but I might I think I'm going to wait until Monday to tell you how I think of it now, to tell you of how I think the snatching away will go. But here's how I used to think it will go. It's very close to what I now think, how I now think it will go. Since it's so secret and since the world will not even know about it, folks, there will not be a ripple of disturbance on this earth when we are snatched away. It's the exact opposite of the left behind Christian scenario, the exact opposite. I used to think, okay, every one of us, all, all 500 of us, when that day and the moment arise, arrives, we will each be in a remote location. I used to say this and I really wasn't joking. I really wasn't joking when I said this. Some may laugh at me, I don't care. I don't care. I would tell friends, I probably said it on a show, that I think every member of the body of Christ when this event occurs will be in the shower. They'll be in the shower. Because everybody's gonna be alone so that nobody sees it. Everybody's gonna be isolated so that nobody sees it. And when you're in the shower or taking a bath, you don't have your clothes on, so you're not gonna leave clothing behind. And so, how perfect. I wonder if God can make sure that all the members of the body of Christ are in the shower at the same time. That seems highly unlikely. Really? Of course it doesn't. God can do anything he wants. So, I thought, Paul's gospel is a secret from start to finish. But then there was a disturbing thought there is that what would our loved ones think? Because it, I, I, I said it won't even make a ripple on the earth. That's broadly speaking. But of course, your loved ones will miss you. And they will wonder what happened to you. And I have a suspicion of what they might think. Were there no witnesses? The, the scenario I am painting for you is one in which there are no witnesses. No witnesses to the snatching away. I, 
obvious unless you don't you know, generally take a shower with more than one person mm. of course it, it could also happen that everyone is in bed at the time this happens I just don't see a scenario where somebody's in line at Walmart another person is at a Christmas at a party a Christmas party assuming it takes place on Christmas Day forget that uh, I just um, of course, we like to think of those things. At a football game, you're in a stand full of people, and suddenly you are snatched away. The dead in Christ, of course, rising first. There's no, nobody sees the dead. Nobody notices the dead. The dead are completely silent as thousands. Now, remember, I'm saying that those who are alive are very few in number. I'm not saying that there's only 500 members in the body of Christ. Those are the ones that are alive. There's, there's thousands that have died over the years. I don't know how many thousands. But when they rise from the dead, it won't even make a whisper. Nobody will know nothing about them. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But now I think that some people will know about us. And I'm going to tell you why on Monday. I'm sorry to do this to you, but there's a reason for it. So this is a two-part talk on the mechanics, the details of the snatching away of the body of Christ, which I comfort you with these words today as Paul comforted the saints of his day. We shall not all die.